Welcome to Pouse Out of the House. In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace this license plate holder, which comes as standard on the Husqvarna 701 SM, and fit this genuine Husqvarna tail tidy in its place. So this is a genuine Husqvarna tail tidy that reuses the original tail light and includes a plug and play light for the license plate. If you're interested in this tail tidy, the part number is on the screen now and its official name is a license plate holder support. So first of all, I remove the original license plate by undoing the plastic screws with a screwdriver and holding the nut on the back. Then using a T25 Torx bit, I undo the screws holding the plastic plate to the plate holder. If you look here, the nuts on the back are fixed into place. I then refit the screws so not to lose them. These two screws are also supplied with the kit. I'll put these to one side for use in a minute. Now, if for whatever reason you don't have the instruction manual, you can go to Google, type in Husqvarna Technical Accessories Manuals, click on Owner's Manuals, then scroll down to Insert Article Number, then type in the part number that we saw on the packet earlier, click Download, and there you have your instruction manual. Now we need to remove the seat, and to do this we go to the left hand side of the bike and pull this cord from behind the frame, at the same time lifting the seat from the rear. And I pull gently on the clip at the front of the bike on the left hand side, then go to the other side and do the same, then gently pull backwards and the seat will come away from the bike. Using a T30 Torx bit, remove the screws from under the seat. And just a quick reminder that I put a link to all the products and tools that I use in the description section below. Again, using a T30 Torx bit, we remove these two screws. And then the same again for these two screws. Now we've taken out all the screws necessary to remove the rear plastic. Now the instructions say to push down and pull back to release the plastic. Now I tried this for several minutes without any success, and eventually with a bit of pressure, I did get it out but unfortunately caused this small crack in the plastic. And from what I can see, the only way to do this and avoid cracking the plastic is to take off the two side panels and then take this one off last. Now the plate holder is exposed, we can remove the two screws from either side and then remove these two screws from underneath. Then remove the two screws from just behind. Now go back to the top of the plate holder and you'll see your wires are held together with a cable tie. Snip the cable tie to release the wires and these wires are for your two indicators, your rear light and brake light and the light for your license plate. And before disconnecting the wires I just like to label up both sides of the connection with indicators, rear light, plate light just for my own peace of mind. Now we need to disconnect the wires and to do this you need something small and pointy. I'm just using the tip of my wire cutters but you could use something like a small screwdriver. Just push on the clip and the connector and the two parts will separate. Now undo the remaining two screws at the back and all that's left holding the plate holder to the bike is the connector to the plate light. Unclip the connector in the same way as we did the others. We can now remove the plate holder. Now we need to remove the indicator or signal lights from the old plate holder. To do this use a 13mm spanner and loosen the nut. You'll note there's a nut, locking washer and a spacer. Keep those safe to one side for reuse in a minute and gently pull the wire through the hole in the plate holder. Now do exactly the same to the other side. Now using a T25 Torx bit undo these two screws. This will release the rear light from the plate holder. Then on the other side of the plate holder you'll see there's these two clips. Release the clips using a very small flat bladed screwdriver and the light should pop out. And finally pop out the rubber grommet for reuse on the new plate holder. So now it's time to refit all the parts to the new plate holder. Firstly taking your light just clip it back into place. Now feed the wire for your light back through the rubber grommet and then seat the rubber grommet firmly over the plastic on the plate holder. This needs to be done correctly as this will prevent ingress of water. Reusing the screws we just removed, tighten these back up into the light on the other side. And these should be tightened to 2 Nm. I do this using a torque wrench. Now feed the wire of your indicator through the hole in the new plate holder. The indicator has a plastic moulding that slots into place. Then the spacer we took off the old plate holder doesn't actually fit through the hole on the new one. However, I'm going to reuse it anyway. So put in the spacer, followed by the locking washer, then the nut. I tighten up. And then I use the 13mm spanner to finish it off. Then do exactly the same to the other side. Now reusing the screws that we took off earlier, begin to attach the newly assembled plate holder to the back of the bike. For now we just do these up hand tight. 
Now we need to reconnect the wires and these connectors are shaped in a way that you can't actually put them back together wrong as they only match the corresponding connector. Now neatly bend and bundle all the wires together before securely cable tying together. So for this next bit we need to use the screws supplied in the packet which I showed you earlier as they replace the screws that we took out. Then using a T10 Torx bit, tighten up. And can I just ask that if you are finding this video useful can you please give it a like and please subscribe to my channel as it would really help me out. We then need to tighten these two screws up to 8 newton meters. Now go back to the screws on the side, these also need to be tightened up to 8 newton meters. Now we can refit the rear plastic. I do this with a little bit of gentle persuasion, being careful not to crack the plastic again. Then again, reusing the screws we took out earlier, tighten up by hand. And the instructions say to do these screws up to 8 newton meters, but this felt like way too much, so I just did them up to what felt right. Then reuse and tighten up the screws above the tail light. And do the same with these screws under the plastics. And then tighten these screws up to 3 newton meters. So there we go, that's everything installed. Now we just need to check the rear light, the indicators, the brake light, and the light for the license plate. If you've got a standard size license plate, you can attach it to the plate holder directly, adjusting the reflector up and down according to your requirements. Or we could screw this plastic plate back on, adding the license plate to the top, either with screws or with sticky pads, adding the reflector to the bottom here. Or in my situation, I bought a smaller license plate with legal size lettering. I'm going to adapt this plastic plate to fit my license plate holder and add the reflector to the bottom. And I'll show you what I came up with now. So in the end, I removed the reflector from the original fitting. I cut the plastic plate down to size using an angle grinder with a metal cutting disc. I refitted the reflector, sticking it through the two holes in the plastic plate and attached it using double-sided sticky tape. Looking at the plate holder from underneath, you can see I cut the plastic plate just smaller than the size of the license plate. This means that when looking at the license plate, you can't see the plastic plate behind. I left these screws in place underneath the license plate. Then to attach the license plate, I drilled three holes through the license plate and the plastic plate behind using an HSS drill bit, ensuring I avoided the plastic frame of the plate holder, and then I used the original plastic screws to fix it into place. As you can see, there are several ways to finish off your plate holder, and how you do it is entirely up to you, but hopefully I've given you a few ideas. So if you found this video useful, then please give it a like, and if you're interested in more 701 mods, you can head over to my channel, check out my other videos, as there's plenty more to come. I've got a Honda Grom and a DRZ400, so there'll be more maintenance and mods on those as well. And finally, can I ask that you please subscribe to my channel and press that bell icon for regular notifications. I've been pouced out of the house. Ta-ta, farewell.